Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield, and it's going to be an interesting one. Hopefully you've got your seatbelts on tight and you're ready to rock and roll because we've got some topics that are really at the heart of this cattle market, and it's been discussed. I was just at the Sand Hills Cattlemen's Convention out in Valentine this week. You can guarantee there was a lot of water cooler talk from these ranchers as to what's going on in the cattle market. So we're bringing down the man with the hat today. Brad Coima is joining us. He's with Coima, Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. We got to ask, what is going on right now that it's so difficult for guys to get bids on these cattle that are ready to go? You know, I thought maybe I'd cowboy up today thinking if I'd look like one of these guys with a formula price deal like they all have in the South, maybe if I look like one of them, maybe I could get a bid. There They're getting go. along just fine, right? Um, I'm beyond frustrated. I was hardly fit to be talked to yesterday. I'm going to try to be a little more polite, barely, today. Um, today, there was a little bit of activity around a little bit. Uh, cash market yesterday was non-existent. The only thing people could talk about was how poor the auctions were. Um, this, I mean, okay, so I feed some cattle. I don't. If you don't like that, I don't care. So I got cattle fat right now in Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Okay, so for two weeks, I haven't been able to get a bid, a bid. I mean, th th we're not in the throes of COVID here. We killed 657 cattle last week, 657,000 cattle last week. I mean, it's not like the plants are closed. It's just that, in my view, there's way too much this captive supply. And the guy that's doing the negotiation, the hard work of it, like like me and a lot of my my friends up here in Nebraska and Iowa are, they're the ones that are left holding the bag with a perishable commodity like cattle that get bigger every day. So, you know, um, I'm really disgusted uh, with the way the market turn has had. I'm, I'm frustrated with uh, what appears to be a, a, a lack of understanding that, that you've uh, got to do something about this high level of captive supply. I, you know, for me, for me, I was I was in a, I was in a rotten mood yesterday till I read this, and then I turned into a really rotten mood. I'm looking at here for your for your viewers' sake a, a uh, summary sheet from the USDA uh, Daily Direct Steer and Heifer Slaughter Summary. You can find it. Look it up. Um, and th this 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 was information that was about what the uh, weights are doing, and specifically what the weights are doing if you are formula priced cattle. Only formula priced cattle, not cash cattle, just formula priced cattle. Okay. So Iowa, Minnesota, guess what? If you're on a formula, the formula average weights are actually below not just a year ago, but below the five year average. How about Colorado? They are much below, sharply below the formula weights are than the five year average. Okay. How about Nebraska? Slightly below the five year average. So what's that telling you? If you're a formula guy, you're fine. No worries. But if you're trying to sell cash cattle in the open market, like a lot of us are, too bad. I mean, you can't even get him to answer the phone. Um, it's time for change. I am really, really tired of it. Now, let's talk a little bit of positive things. We did a big kill yesterday, 122. Um, there was a little bit of a market around uh, up here today, anywhere from 198 selectively to the Packer that does seem to play ball. Um, 124 to a regional early this morning in your neck of the woods. Um, I know of cattle that were traded out of Northwest Iowa for 123 that are going to go all the way to Dodge City. That's four and a half dollars for eight from here. Um, that is a positive. Okay. Um, you know, I'm a little irked here too that the market's 123 here and 124 in the south when you know the quality of our cattle is leaps and bounds better than theirs. And you have a choice select spread at $35. We should be getting a premium. Um, but the fact that they're willing to kill them up here and got a few would tell me that we're getting more current in Kansas. We got to watch that really carefully. So, and a solid day in the future today, finally, for the first time in a while. Huh? Yeah, well, having said that, and I, I kind of want to wrap back around this. You talk about cattle going from Iowa to Kansas, that $4. That $4 is obviously being absorbed by the packer, mm -hmm. not by the producer. Right. So sure. what is it going to take to see the, the Colorado plants, the Dakota City plants? What is going to happen to get them more efficient so we're not having to ship cattle? I know Kansas needs them, but keep them more local to be processed. And maybe bump up that $4 and give you guys a little bit of bonus? Right. Okay, the real world, I know it doesn't happen that way, but. Well, you make an excellent point, uh, great question. One that you're gonna close to get me in trouble because you know what I said off air about what's going on out there, right? Um, Colorado, 
the two plants there, the Fort Morgan plant and the Greeley plant, uh, particularly the Greeley plant, historically struggles with efficiency, um, with a workforce that's unreliable. How about that for a lot more polite than my what I talked about off air? Um, and, and I don't know what what you do about that. There seems to be that there seems to be the culture out there uh, that uh, work is less important than video games and uh, whatever else they do over there. Um, the Dakota City plant to me is particularly troubling. That's the other plant that seems to have the biggest trouble with efficiency of uh, you know in the non Colorado based area. I you know and I could be real cynical and say well pay more. That, that still would be my answer. Um, it's hard for me not to imagine with packer margins as large as they are that they wouldn't be incentivized uh, by greed uh, you know to figure out a way to kill more efficiently than they are. But you know who's who's to say? I, I, I'm just a poor cattle trader here. Um, but I, I think your question, though, to your point is, I don't know if we'll get Colorado there. I got to think at some point uh, the folks at uh, closer to home here are going to figure out a way because of the, the immense profit potential here that they're going to figure out a way to do it. If they don't, somebody else is going to. I mean, uh, you're, you're going to get the North Platts and the Colum uh, uh, by Omaha. Uh, there's another one scheduled now in Dumas. Uh, Tame is going to double their deal. You know, so, um, you know, they can fiddle or diddle all, all, all they want. But at some point, the economy economics the economy of what's what they should be doing will catch up to them i believe but you know that, that was the discussion when i was at that sand hills meeting is obviously they were talking about the plant in north platte and, and the point brought up by one of the ranchers is maybe we're going to start seeing more of these smaller plants popping up all over the countryside to help compete yeah. against what's been happening and compete against as they called it the big four Right. One of the one of one positive thing that's come out of some of this association stuff that I'm engaged with is, you know, supporting and financially so from the from even from Washington D.C. to this uh, these smaller plants and be able to go across state lines <clears throat> and, and and you know people will say well that isn't going to make a difference well actually uh, there's a little plant in Minnesota I think I've probably sold fourteen fifteen sixteen hundred to get a head of cattle to, to. Um, you know, that's the that's the outfit that I sold cattle for a dollar thirty picked up to four weeks ago. Um, you know, so is it real? You dang right, it's real. If you're involved in the negotiation process, I mean, that's more cattle than I've sold to Dakota City in two years combined. Um, so I, every little bit helps. Um, um, I'm growing impatient. Uh, we've got to get something going here quicker. I think with uh, needing to mandate uh, an increased number of negotiated cattle. Um, I won't give up, <clears throat> but I wish I had better news on that front. But I, I you know, we're getting closer. Trust me. Uh, but uh, it won't be today yet. So let's end on hopefully some positive news, and that's with consumer demand. What are you hearing when it comes to this box beef movement and meat moving across those meat counters? Well, you know, anecdotally, I hear, uh, you know, I, I hear about the little restaurants around here that can't even get prime rib bought uh, for their Christmas parties, right? You know. Um, but from a bigger, bigger uh, picture, you know, when you, when you've got choice select spread this wide, that's telling you that there's there's a there's a segment of our our uh, our end users that aren't afraid of cost. Um, when you look at export demand, it's a record. Um, it, it, there is nobody's going to tell me that demand is the problem here. If, if if anything's going wrong here, which really unsettles me deeply, is that we just went through a time here where you had the best demand ever. We sold it for the highest price ever on a retail basis. And, and and then I've got people that turn around and they're telling me that, yeah, you know what's wrong with the market though, Brad? It's it's that darn cow calf guy. He's got too many cows. That's what's wrong. We got too much supply. Please hear me how sarcastic I'm trying to be. That is so ridiculous. I mean, the problem with the market is too many cattle. Right. Uh, um, anyway, so. Demand is great. Don't let anybody kid you. Um, we'll get through this thing. You know, hopefully by the time we see three years of declining cow numbers, which will mean a smaller calf crop. By that time, we'll have the expansion going on in the feedlot. Maybe we can have our turn in the saddle for a while. And believe me, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna take every advantage of it if I can. All right, we'll see you with that hat back on. All right. All right, Brad Coyne has been joining us. That's this week's cattle call. Just a reminder: commodity futures and options do involve substantial risk of loss. Are not suitable to all investors. That's this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield.